Hi and welcome to the last episode of Defemoremba, your daily ephemera inspiration in December. My name is Luisa Heinzel and in collaboration with 49 Dragonflies, I am showing you different ideas to make your own junk journal ephemera out of basic supplies. The last prompt of our list is wood and packaging. So I would like to make an accordion style ephemera holder today out of really basic supplies. I mean, look at this, what I have here on my desk. I have this packaging. It's an Amazon packaging made out of this a little bit thicker material and this wrapping paper that also comes from an Amazon packaging. And this is my wood element that I want to include to the cover of this accordion style ephemera holder. So here's my ephemera. <laughs> I was so surprised when I had everything here on my desk that I've created during this December daily series. It's so much, it's so gorgeous and I'm so happy that I have all this ephemera to use in my upcoming junk journals. It's really, really cool. And of course, I hope that you have followed this series and made your own bunch of junk journal ephemera and I'm so hoping that you are as happy as me to have this in your stash so that you have it right at hand to use. So um, I would like to choose the size for my ephemera holder and for that I'm choosing my biggest piece of this ephemera series here. So that's this thing here, this little page where I have painted this snow woman and that's my size um, for this whole thing and I was really happy that the size was nearly the same as my Amazon packaging here. If you don't have such a packaging material, of course you can use any um, kind of a little bit thicker material like cardstock or a little bit thicker scrapbooking paper, perhaps two layers of scrapbooking paper for the cover and I'm sure you will find some similar materials. I mean, those cereal boxes would work, a rice packaging would work, anything like that. I've removed those labels to have a plain surface to work on. And then I've also cut these little uh, flip thingies here to have um, a rectangle cover base. Um, I've left the edges as they were since I had, um, yeah, deconstructed them with my scissors it's a little bit you know this grungy vintage style I want that <laughs> and I want this whole thing really rough and really yeah back to the roots or how can I say that um, for the pages I have used this thinner material and I've just teared that and I haven't done that with my ruler to get a straight edge, as you can see, but I've just shared that in a really irregular and grungy way um, to get that, yeah, really rough, as I said. Um, this material has to be approximately as high as your cover is. Um, so I've put this Amazon um, packaging next to this other paper to just eyeball that. And um, on the other side of this material, I've just uh, I've just teared a smaller um, piece so that I can get this really rough edges on this side as well. And I did that with all of the um, packaging paper pieces that I had on my desk. And then I've just glued them together <coughs> to get a really long, yeah, uh, strip of this uh, material. For this, I've just used my glue stick. And um, yeah, mm, here I have to say, uh, originally I wanted to sew on top of this uh, glued area, um, but then I realized later when I had folded this to this accordion style book um, that I can't bring that through my sewing machine. So I would recommend to use a stronger glue here. Um, use a bookbinders glue, for example, or a matte medium or whatever that is a little bit stronger than this glue stick. I haven't realized that, um, yeah, while I have recorded this, so I wanted to recommend um, yeah, a stronger glue here. Um, and here you can see me gluing this cover to this, uh, yeah, to one of the ends of this longer uh, packaging paper. And then I'm starting folding my pages. Um, here I'm letting a little bit of this packaging material 
peeking out to the side. I'm not lining, lining it up with the left side of the cover, as you can see, as you perhaps would normally do that, because I want this to be really irregular, really, really, really rough. Um, the same on the other side. I've just folded the packaging paper back and then, yeah, you know, made this accordion style. Just fold it forth and back, um, yeah, until the paper is uh, at its end. And um, then you will have this accordion style, yeah, I would say base for this ephemera holder. Um, I can't tell you how much paper you will need um, to make enough pages because I don't know um, how much ephemera you would like to store in this thing here. But I think if you have really lot a lot of ephemera it's better to make two or three of these ephemera holders um, than only one because this whole thing will get really really bulky in the end um yeah so <clears throat> here for the back cover i've just um, tried to line that up with the front cover and then i've glued it here to this last a piece of this packaging paper as well. This way you have a sturdy front and back cover. And as I said, use a stronger glue. I'm using my glue stick here as well because I thought, as I said, I want to sew around um, and then it would be really strong and sturdy, but uh, that didn't work. I mean, if you have this bunch of material, you can't bring that through your sewing machine. It's a, yeah, I don't know what was in my brain when I thought I could manage that, but... <laughs> That's junk journaling live here on my channel. Sorry. Um, yeah, some kind of a happy, uh, not a happy accident, an accident, a normal accident. So uh, yeah, use a strong glue, please. <laughs> now we have this. And as you can see, um, these um, folds of the single pages is not really yeah uh, beautiful not strong and uh i didn't like that so i decided that i want to strengthen that with a piece of fabric i've just used this uh yeah coffee dyed fabric and this blue fabric it's really um, thin but sturdy um it has to be thin so that you can um still flip the pages later so make sure that your fabric is not too too um strong and too thick Otherwise, you will have problems to get a nice fold to your uh, to your pages later. Um, and I've just glued that down with some bookbinders glue. Um, and <clears throat> I did that from the one side and the other side as well, so that this is really strong and decorated as the same uh, at the same time. Um, and here's the same problem with the glue. I thought I could go to my sewing machine so I applied this glue really randomly because I thought um, it shall hold this fabric only until I go to my um, sewing machine. Uh, later on when I realized that I can't sew it I've glued it a little bit more exactly but uh, you will not see that in, in the video I have cut that out but um, yeah make sure that this lays really flat um, if you don't want to sew or you can't sew, as I couldn't sew, then then make sure that it is glued down really, really well because it shall help to strengthen those folds of the pages. Here you can see um, the, the areas where I uh, have managed to sew, but as I said, it worked not on every page. And now I'm starting to create some pockets to put, put my ephemera in. And here I'm following our ephemera prompt list to try to put the ephemera pieces into the right order in this uh, journal. But I relatively, uh, yeah, I, I realized relatively fast that it's not possible to um, follow this order of the list. Um, on the first pages I could manage it but then I realized that I have to go with the size and the bulk of the ephemera pieces um, to make those pockets and to make this whole thing work and handy. Especially I want to have it uh, handy so that I can take it out, take some ephemera pieces, use them in my journal and then put that back into my shelf. Um, so in the end... I couldn't follow this prompt list order, but I think that's totally not important. 
And for the pockets, I've used um, some leftover materials. Perhaps you recognize some of the materials that I have shown you in the tutorials during December. Uh, I wanted to have this really cohesive and uh, especially I wanted to use the scraps and the leftovers that I had. I have some other materials here, for example, this envelope that I um, have from, from my stash. So that's not a leftover, um, but it's also really, yeah, neutral, not decorated or anything like that. Um, and so I went on uh, through this whole ephemera holder to create some pockets that um, can hold my ephemera and um, I went with the shape and the size and the bulk of the ephemera to decide which material I am using for the pockets. I mean these little tickets for example um, shall be safe in this ephemera holder um, but they also have these little dangles um, and I didn't want to put them into this envelope completely because then it's really thick and really bulky. I wanted to have these little dangles hang out to the side of the journal and that they can peek out there. So I made this side loaded pocket out of this handmade ledger paper copy as you can see here. Um, and so I went through the whole journal. I uh, decided where the ephemera piece shall be in the end and then I've, yeah, <laughs> I can say glued the pocket around it. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, but that was a really interesting experience because I've never done that before in this way. Normally I have a piece of paper and I think, oh, that can become a pocket. And then I make the pocket and later I decide which ephemera piece I would like to put in and not this way around. It was a really new experience and perhaps you would like to try that out by yourself for your own um, ephemera holder creations um yeah so in the um next steps here i am giving you some music so that you can enjoy uh watching me create this pockets perhaps you can get some new ideas for your pocket ideas as well and yeah enjoy my process and enjoy watching
Okay, so after this is done, I think it's time to decorate the cover. I've decided to use this Distress Oxide in blue. I think that's a really cool color. I mean, you know, winter, December, blue is a cold color. I think that fits really well. And especially with those colors, this white and this coffee color on those fabric strips, it looks really great. So I've taken this little sponge and just went around really, really randomly with this blue Distress Oxide ink. Um, I have this relatively new in my stash and I was a little bit yeah, afraid <laughs> and surprised at the same time. I mean, this color is really, really cool and it's a really, really interesting and vintage blue. I really like it and I'm really happy that I have it. I also went around this um, yeah, front cover and the back cover as well to distress that a little bit. And um, yeah, so uh, you of course you can also use um, some watercolor for this step. Uh, of course, this is not necessary to do this. It's, as I said, really rough ephemera holder made out of really basic supplies. But why not decorating this a little bit and making it a little bit more beautiful? It's optional, of course, but I think um, it makes a really big difference. Even if it's an, a functional piece, um, why not making it a little bit beautiful? <laughs> so I've decided that I want to uh, stencil around here a little bit and make some stars. Um, I've just used a normal stencil and also this little sponge and went over that, um, especially to break those plain areas a little bit and make this whole thing a little bit more interesting. And as you can see, I've also used some blue papers in the journal as well that I now have distressed also a little bit with this um, ink to make it a little bit more artsy and vintage and, yeah, you know, distressed. <laughs> so here are two of the last letters for the giveaway. It's this one here. And attention, please, there's another one in a second. That is this one here that comes from my little fabric and lace scrap box. Uh, yeah, I don't know how often I have said that, but all the informations for the giveaway are down below in the description box. <laughs> okay, so let's go on with the cover. I have this really cool um, hand dyed paper. This is made with some tea and brush colors. I've, uh, yeah, had that in my stash for ages. I don't know. Um, I've put some leaves on top of this paper when I made that and it has a really cool structure. I think you can't see the details in the camera, but this is a really cool winter paper for me. Um, it has this blue color. It's not the same color like the Distress Oxide color, I know, but um, I think it balances this... Um, other blue a little bit and it's a really cool contrast with this um, packaging material co uh, color. I wanted to have some snow on this paper so I have used some acrylic paint that I've just watered down and then I used my brush to splatter this to um, the paper there and then I have let that air dry um, because if you splatter to uh, this stained paper, then those splashes get a little bit different than when you dry them with your heat gun, for example. So perhaps you have tried that out before, then you know what I'm talking about. If you are perhaps a beginner to junk journaling or to those techniques, then please try that out. Um, make two of the same pieces of paper and then splatter with uh, acrylic paint or white gesso or whatever, and then dry one with your heat gun and the other one let air dry and then you will see a really big difference um, especially on coffee dyed paper that makes really really cool effects if you let that air dry um, to make this a little bit more interesting and grungy i've just dipped my fingers into the wet paint and yeah as you can see it made this little artsy thing out of this paper <laughs> and then I've decided what which of those papers I want to have on the front side of this uh, book and which one on the back side. And um, then I've just glued that down with my glue stick. Um, yeah, I think for me, this is strong enough. 
Uh, as I said before, um, perhaps it's a good idea to use a stronger glue, but here the problem was that I couldn't really remember how I had made this paper. Um, and the brush or colors are water soluble. And I have no experience what happens when I use a wet glue to glue this on. I mean, I could use some Mod Podge, for example, to glue that way more stronger than with a glue stick. But I was afraid of some ugly things on my paper that come from this wet glue, like Mod Podge. Um, so I've decided that I want to use my glue stick. Uh, but yeah, I think that's something that we could try out what will happen. Um, in the next step, I've added some gilding wax. So that's, yeah, some kind of a wax paste. You can apply that with your finger. Or, of course, you could also use a sponge. Or you could put that through a stencil, for example, to make some more elegance to your paper and to your project. I really like to use this wax. I don't know why, but, yeah, it's a strange thing. Um, in the past, I was not such a friend of those golden things. And... Uh, I really didn't like those, um, yeah, golden splatters and golden accents everywhere. And when I saw that in other projects, I, I thought, okay, it's, it's beautiful, but it's not my thing and not my medium. And now I'm using this gold <laughs> nearly everywhere. It's really strange. Um, so I wanted to have a little bit more contrast and a little bit more interest, um, to this background. So I've stamped with this. Um, Tim Holtz stamp. This is one of his Stampers Anonymous. Oh, sorry. You know what I mean. I can't. I can't say this word. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, this is um, yeah, such a border stamp that comes in a collection of I think five or six. I don't know. And I really like those, especially for backgrounds. If you are interested in this stamp set, please check out the info box. I have linked that down below for you as well. If you are interested in having that for yourself. And I think this gives this whole thing a little bit more contrast and interest. It looks really cool in my eyes. I hope you like it as well. So let's come to this um, front cover thingy. Uh, I've glued this paper in the same way like um, on the back side, just with my glue stick. Um, but uh, to the front side, of course, I want to have something yeah like an, a focal point and of course I also have to include my wooden element to fulfill this prompt of today. For this front cover I have crumbled the paper a little bit more than on the back side while I have glued it to get this um, structure no texture I don't know the difference you know what I mean to my paper so when I apply this gilding wax now that I have more um, yeah, that it can be realized uh, easier and that it is a little bit more on the front side than on the back side. And with this little um, texture there, uh, it comes, of course, it, it pops out more than when you glue the paper in a really flat and equal way. So I've just put that to my packaging paper ra really randomly as well. Um, yeah. And now this whole thing has this really cool shimmer and I really like that. That looks really frosty and elegant at the same time. And now I want to include this wooden thing here. That's um, yeah, some kind of an accident. <laughs> because, yeah, to be honest, I have filmed this last prompt for three times. My first idea went totally wrong and I have deleted my video. It was a totally different idea, but what I had in my head didn't work and I didn't want you, wanted to show you that because I don't want you to be disappointed if you try that out and it uh, don't work at, at your desk at well, as well. So I have deleted that and in the second video... <laughs> that I've tried to record I tried to make something like a paper bag with this wooden star um, and that also didn't work so <laughs> I've deleted that video as well and then I came to the idea to make this ephemera holder and this star has um, still this uh, paper bag thingy from the second video underneath so I've just teared that off and I thought I would like to use this accident as a part of this new project 
First, I thought I would like to include my paperclip to the cover, but then I decided that this is way too much and I've just put it into this little book um, to find a place later where it can, it can be hold. Ding dong, attention please. Here are some more letters for the giveaway. This one here and attention, there's another one here. That's <clears throat> this one here. All the information for the giveaway is down below in the description box. <laughs> I think that's the last time that I have to say that here. Okay, so um, I wanted to have this really cool die cut leaves here on my cover. Uh, these die cuts also come from Tim Holtz, from the Tim Holtz collection. Um, and they are really, really cool. I am so in love with these leaves. And I've just um, tried out this die cut uh, thingies the other day. And I had those on my desk and thought why not using them for this project so I'm trying to arrange yeah something like a focal point um, to this front cover by arranging those leaves around this star and I have to say I had really big problems and I had to ask my hubby what to do <laughs> so here's a really big time missing in the video that I have cut out here you can see the hands of my hubby. <laughs> Sorry for that. But he had to help me because I I had lost my eye for this arrangement. I had so many different um, layouts on my table that I couldn't decide how I wanted to use, uh, how I wanted to arrange it. And yeah, then he helped me and I have decided that I wanted to make it like you can see it here. And I think... It's time to thank everyone who has followed this series in December. So I think I can speak for 49 Dragonflies, Barbara and myself. We are so very, very happy and so proud of all of you out there who have followed this series and made some own ephemera with, uh, with the help of our tutorials. Your support is absolutely outstanding and so heartwarming for us. It's so gorgeous. And I don't know if you can imagine how much work and effort went into this Defemoramba series. Um, but yeah, it's nothing compared to what you gave back to us. And it's so, so cool. And so we are both so grateful for that. Thank you so much to everyone out there. <sighs> you know, English is my second language and it's so hard for me to express my emotions in English. And often I don't have the right words. If I could speak German here, I think it's it would be way more easy for me. But please make sure, no, be sure, sorry, um, that this is one of the most amazing things that we've ever done and I'm so grateful for this collaboration so Barbara if you see that thank you so much for collaborating with me during this December daily series and I'm so happy that you did that with me and we had so much fun not only with we both but also of course with all of you out there um, and you you made this December yeah into a really really special month for both of us thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for that and now you can enjoy the final flip through of this eco accordion <laughs> accordion <laughs> ephemera holder oh my goodness i'm mixing the words i'm so excited <laughs> and yeah to be honest i'm also a little bit happy that I have managed this whole thing because for me it was 50 videos I mean 25 in English and 25 in German I yeah this whole thing controlled my life <laughs> during I have recorded this series and yeah I'm a little bit happy that it is done as well at the moment <laughs> but okay so let's go through this as you can see, everything has its place now. Um, it is stored really well and in a really secure way, I would say. But I also have to say this is a really bulky thing. Um, this ephemera holder is nothing that you can take with you for a travel or something like that. Um, I can... Yeah, travel from my desk to my shelf with it or from my 
one desk to the to another desk but that's all because it's so bulky and you have to handle it with care to make sure that nothing can't uh, nothing falls out or something like that i mean yeah it's a functional thing as i said and of course um this ephemera will not stay so very long in this ephemera holder because i want to use this ephemera in my upcoming journals of course and um this is a thing that will be on my desk with me and i can flip through it and um look if i find something that fits to my actual journal that i am working on and then i can take it out and when this is empty i think i will fill it up again with things that are not so bulky and i will definitely put not so much into it like it is also uh, you know like it is now uh, it that it is not so bulky like it is now and it's a really really strange feeling as well for me i don't know if you have ever experienced such a feeling if you have worked on such a bunch of ephemera for such a long time and then you can see it all in one place that's really strange that's really really strange and perhaps you want to try that out mm, it's also an experience i think for that can be helpful for your own motivation and your own mojo mm, some of you have asked um what do you do if you um, have lost your mojo has that ever happened to you of course that happens to me and it's really hard to get over this sh thing but if you have something um yeah perhaps you have a tiny thing here that you have created another tiny ephemera piece there that you have created the other day then you have forgot the tag that you have made a week ago collect all of these things bring them all together in one place like i did that here in a really extremely way of course but if you have the, this mojo problem bring everything together that you have created the last weeks in one spot and look at it and i'm sure that you will realize what you have done and that it's not too less and you will realize that you can be satisfied with what you have created and i think that's a really really important thing and i'm always talking about that uh try to realize um what you have done on the one hand and try to be satisfied with what you have created and i think even if it's only a small piece of ephemera it doesn't have to be such a bunch of ephemera even if you only have made a tag be satisfied with it because you have created it you and no one else could do it in a way like you have done it and also if you have more ephemera perhaps that you have made during the series look at it and be proud of it and the last thing that i want to say is merry christmas of course <laughs> have a great day a uh, great day uh, have great day 